Good morning, it's Tuesday, December 8th, and this is the Wenatchee World's newest podcast, Slices of Wenatchee. We're excited to bring you a closer look at one of our top stories and other announcements every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Today, we're discussing how Wenatchee could receive its first vaccine shipment as early as mid-December. Today's episode is brought to you by Equilus Group Incorporated. Equilus Group Incorporated is a registered investment advisory firm in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Equilus Group Incorporated, building your financial success. Learn more at equilusfinancial.com, member SIPC and FINRA. And before we begin, do you want to share your home's holiday light display with the valley? You can add your festive decorations to our interactive map by visiting wenatcheeworld.com slash holidaylights. Now our feature story. Confluence Health has been approved as one of the first COVID-19 vaccine distribution centers in the state, and they're expecting to receive their first doses by mid-December. The first shipment will include around 975 doses, likely going to healthcare workers and long-term care facilities first, followed by other at-risk groups and eventually full communities. The first vaccine Confluence expects to receive is manufactured by the American company Pfizer and German company BioNTech. Early data from clinical trials found the vaccine to be safe and 95% effective. Here's Confluence Health's Dr. Mark Johnson, an infectious disease physician in Wenatchee. Hi, my name is Mark Johnson. I'm an infectious disease physician in Wenatchee. I've been here since 2017. Prior to that, I was an infectious disease uh, active duty naval officer in the U.S. Navy since 2004. With the recent preliminary data coming out of the COVID-19 Pfizer vaccine study, I wanted to talk for a moment about Uh, When is this vaccine coming, and how is that rollout going to look? As case counts of COVID-19 in the region and across the U.S. have gone up quite a bit, the vaccine preliminary data is actually very good news, and I'm cautiously optimistic. So we can anticipate that this vaccine uh, might be available as early as the end of December. But again, several steps have to occur for that to happen before we are convinced it is both safe and effective. It's a two-dose vaccine, and initially, uh, we think that the federal government will recommend it be given first to healthcare workers and first responders, and then start to be rolled out then to uh, individuals 65 and older, and to others with high-risk additional medical illness. This will be a complicated rollout of the vaccine, but it'll be critically important that eventually we get enough people vaccinated, well more than 200 million individuals in the United States, so we can get vaccine-derived herd immunity and come to an end of this pandemic. But for the foreseeable future, it will take quite some time to continue to roll out the vaccine and to get it to everyone who needs it. Confluence Health officials cautioned in an interview Friday that the distribution plan and timeline are still being worked out, so the details of the plan may change. The Pfizer vaccine is also still under review at the FDA. But according to Tyler Fishback, pharmacy manager and COVID-19 vaccine coordinator, the organization's approval as a storage and distribution site, which was granted by the State Department of Health back on November 24th, confirms that it is in fact in a position to effectively bring vaccines to North Central Washington. Fishback said there have been weekly calls with the Department of Health and other community partners to plan how they will orchestrate the largest vaccination effort of the last 50 or 60 years. He said it's an enormous undertaking, and it'll be an all-hands-on-deck community effort. The delivery alone is delicate. The doses must be transported and kept at minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit, which Confluence will be able to accommodate in a freezer in one of its Wenatchee facilities. In fact, they actually have the capacity to hold around 20,000 doses in their research freezer. Confluence Health is the region's largest healthcare provider, and they already have experience handling and distributing the Pfizer vaccine on a much smaller scale. It was one of a few hundred organizations across the country that participated in Pfizer's Phase 3 trial earlier this year. Another vaccine, this one created by Boston company Moderna, is also pending approval by the FDA and is expected to be the next one delivered to North Central Washington. One major benefit? The Moderna vaccine doesn't need the ultra-cold temperatures that the Pfizer vaccine requires, which Fishback believes will allow it to be more easily distributed, especially to more rural communities. Like the Pfizer vaccine, it's also an mRNA vaccine that requires two doses. An mRNA vaccine essentially instructs a person's cells to create a harmless piece of the coronavirus, called a spike protein. In response, the body develops an immune response and antibodies that can fight off the real coronavirus. The chief of the FDA said on Friday that 20 million Americans could be vaccinated this year. 
Here he is in an interview with Reuters. Is it realistic for the White House to say that 20 million people will be inoculated before the end of the year? Is that a realistic promise? Um, so I think given what we know about supplies, it, it is realistic. It'll very much depend upon the, the vaccination campaign and, and the final decisions of the CDC um, and Department of Health and Human Services about allocation. If I'm feeling pressure from the urgency of the situation and the, the thought that we have a significant pandemic in this country, and I totally understand, including from the president, uh, from the administration, from Capitol Hill, from the American public, uh, the, the need for us to move expeditiously. And when the vaccine is finally opened up to the general public, Confluence will work with other local and state partners on a widespread educational campaign to ensure the public understands that it is safe and effective. But until then, Confluence Health CEO Dr. Peter Rutherford has this following message. I'm here on the third floor of Central Washington Hospital, and I've just come out of the area where the COVID patients are being cared for here, and we need your help. Our healthcare system is on the brink. We need you to stay home and wear your mask whenever you are around people not in your usual household. We're not going to make this argument this time with graphs and data. We've been there. We've done that. The reserve capacity that any emergency system maintains to keep everyone safe is spent. The hospital is full and pulling staff from clinics to support those who are sick and dying in the hospital. If it hasn't happened to you yet, understand that canceled clinic visits are most likely the result of resources being pulled towards those sick with COVID-19. Our nurses and physicians are also spent. They drive home close to tears at night and the next morning put on a brave face and come back into the fight. We need you to stay home and wear your mask whenever you are around people you don't live with. For months, our local leaders have petitioned the state for local control, arguing that those of us living in Chelan and Douglas counties know best how to control the pandemic within our communities. This is what local control feels like. Two local physicians who have spent their careers in service to each of you pleading with you. We need you to stay home and wear your mask whenever you are around people you don't live with. None of us plan to slice our finger or break our ankle or develop appendicitis. All of us plan to go to the hospital when a medical crisis strikes. But the hospital has limits and if people continue to ignore well-proven COVID precautions like masking, distancing, and hygiene, the hospital won't be able to suture your finger, set your fracture, or remove your appendix. It will be full. We need you to stay home and wear your mask whenever you're around people who don't leave with you. Please. To keep up with stories like this, sign up for the Wenatchee World's free daily headlines email newsletter. You'll get the day's news delivered straight to your email inbox every weekday morning. Go online to wenatcheeworld.com slash newsletter and enter your email to sign up today. Now, we'd like to take a moment to remember internationally acclaimed violin virtuoso Camilla Wicks, whose passing was deeply felt by many of us in North Central Washington. Camilla, a child prodigy who was recognized as the foremost female concert violinist in the 1940s and 1950s, lived in Wenatchee with her children in the 1970s, where she taught violin and played in the Wenatchee Valley Symphony. Despite her unfathomable talent, she was also a humble soul. Camilla was born into a musical family of Norwegian heritage. She started playing the violin at age three and a half and performed the Vivaldi Concerto in A minor in public from memory at age four. Her family relocated to New York so that she could attend the Juilliard School of Music at age 10. In 1942, at age 13, she debuted as a soloist in New York's Town Hall and later with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. By her late teens, she was appearing with leading American orchestras and touring in Europe to critical acclaim. There were few recordings of Camilla's amazing talents, but the ones that survive have been lauded by music critics, including her legendary performance of the Sibelius Concerto in 1952. She is survived by three of her children, Lise Marie Wirtanzel, Angela Thomas Jeffrey, and Eric John Thomas. Camilla was a remarkable human being and a masterful teacher to so many musicians, both in our valley and around the world. 
If you are interested in hearing more of Camilla's music, she released the album Camilla Wick's Five Decades of Treasured Performances back in 2015. More information on her remarkable life can be found at camillawicks.net. Finally, some local history. Wenatchee Valley History is brought to you by Neighbor, your trusted neighborhood community. Neighbor is a free online forum you can trust to connect with your community, focus on facts, and make a difference. Join the conversation. Visit WenatcheeWorld.com slash N-A-B-U-R. Did you know that between 1910 and 1930, Wenatchee's population surged? It went from less than 4,000 folks in 1910 to nearly 12,000 in 1930. With commercial success came libraries, schools, churches, theaters, shops, newspapers, and other institutions. Thanks for listening. We'd also like to thank our sponsor again, Equilus Group Incorporated, a registered investment advisory firm in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. The Wenatchee World has been engaging, informing, and inspiring North Central Washington communities since 1905. We encourage you to subscribe today to keep your heart and mind connected to what matters most in North Central Washington. Thank you for starting your morning with us, and don't forget to tune in again on Thursday.